Well, here we are. It's another beautiful day today. Look at that. Sky is decidedly blue. Hardly a breath of wind. It's a lovely autumn day. Perfect for FPV flying. So today I'm going to do a flight out here to this, where is it, half round barn. Way over there. See that? It's exactly one kilometer. It's not very far. A thousand meters, about nearly 1100 yards. It's not a long way really, uh, but it's uh, it's a good chance to show you some of the things you should do if you want to keep safe when you're flying FPV. Now this will be within visual line of sight because you can see the model at that range. Well it's very very small but one of the reasons for the visual line of sight rule that most countries have adopted is not so much so you can see your model so that it's so that you can see any threat that the model might pose. So we're in a rural area here as you can see this farmland so you wouldn't expect any um, 747s or jet fighters to come screaming through but being rural it could be helicopters it could be top dressing aircraft we don't know and although you check with the farm owner first whose house is over here somewhere there we go check with the farm owner if you can and find out if they're expecting to do any top dressing or um, agricultural aviation but uh, even so there could be a craft transiting through here to another farm so what we'll do is have the observer looking out to make sure that no aircraft is entering the area and we have contingency because what happens it's all very well detecting an aircraft flying into your flight area, but what do you do? Well in this case I've already decided that if an aircraft does fly into my flight area, which is between here and that half round barn, I'm going to simply land the model. I'll simply put it down, even if it's out of sight, even if I lose my radio link, I'll cut the throttle, the model will, being the AXM, will glide gently to the ground. And if it damages the model, well it's too bad, because it's really not worth endangering human life just to save a model. Now as most regular viewers know, this flight will be conducted from an airfield, see? Great big long airfield, so I won't be travelling off in that direction, which would be on the approach or departure path, and I won't be travelling off in that direction, which should also be on the approach and departure path, because quite legitimately full-size aircraft could be well under the 500 feet minimum as they come in to land or take off. However, on this side, out here, full-size aircraft should remain 500 feet or above, because this will be where they do their downwind leg to come in for landing. So they shouldn't be down there at the level of those treetops where the FPV model's flying. However, as I said, if there was an aircraft that came zooming through there, even if it was breaking the rules, it'd be kind of a pyrrhic victory to say, well, it wasn't my fault. So we take every step possible to ensure safety, hence the observer checking and the contingency plan to cover the situation should it happen, unlikely as it is, that a full-size aircraft flies into my flight zone. So now I'm out here at the field and I've got my pole as you can see, I've got my diversity controller up there. I've got a standard RC, what is it, 305 receiver out of the case. One of my own design receivers here. The, this has got the skew planar, circular polarized antenna. This one has the circular wireless, helical antenna. And of course, when you are using a helical, you have to point it in the direction you want to travel. And remember, when you're using a helical, not only does your um, heading have to be correct, but also make sure your elevation is correct. It's no good having it pointing up, at this, up to the sky or down at the ground. Try and have it pointing parallel with the ground so that you're not going to have to fly extremely high to stay in the beam or extremely low. Now unfortunately the wind's got up quite a bit now, it's just come out of nowhere. Hopefully it's just a thermal, but if it's wind we'll contend with that as well. Remembering it's now blowing as a crosswind. If you're going to go on those first flights, Make sure you fly into wind if you can, because then if you go too far, straight too far, your battery gets a bit low, it's not as hard to get home. If you fly downwind, it's an awful lot harder to fly upwind to get home. And here's the model we'll be using today. It's the good old AXN, one of my favorite all-around sport planes, and quite a good FPV model as well, good candidate for FPV. Now, this one's got the cat whiskers because it's got the RM, R Mile C UHF system in it. I'm using this flight not only as an opportunity to show you how to do a safe FPV flight, but also to test out the r -Mile c Now we're only going 1k, so I expect there'll be no problems at all, but just in case there is, I'm using a cheap disposable model in an area that I know very well. And I just put a keychain camera on the back, see if that affects the trim too much before we fly. So up there on the pole we have our fully charged two cell to operate our receivers and diversity controller. And further down here we've got somewhere We've got a fully charged 3 cell which I'll use for my glasses. All charged up. There's my uh, DVR, mini DVR. Not the highest resolution, but it'll do for giving us a live video, recorded live video feedback, because that'll give us two views of this flight. One that, you, one that I would be seeing when I was flying, and one from the model from the keychain camera. And of course, 
it pays to make sure your wires have the little ties on them so you don't put excess stress on them when you're flying in case you walk away from your pole a little and this pole has been used many times so there's tape and duct tape and velcro and all sorts of things holding the bits on but I've checked all the connectors don't worry I'm pushing this one in firmly before we start flying I've checked all the connectors it's all tight nothing's gonna fall out while we're flying because that's absolutely essential always check your connectors you never know if one of them's got a bit loose or a wire's frayed or something so before every flying session you've really got to go through and just check everything because although we're only flying an AXN today it could be a really expensive FPV model that you don't want to lose and as I've mentioned in previous videos get yourself a scanner set it to the right frequency leave it running so that if an aircraft comes into the vicinity you might hear it call up on the radio and of course have your goggles I use the fat sharks have them safely protected from the sun until you need to use them these ones stay in the cardboard box until I'm ready to fly now before you do your first FPV flight of the day it really does pay it's essential that you do a visual flight so fly it without your goggles on get someone else to look in the goggles or record it on your PVR to make sure that your video link is working properly and it's not going to have dropouts or there isn't a range issue because there's all sorts of things that can happen if this is tuned to the wrong if your receiver is tuned to the wrong frequency you might get great range up close but 30 meters out especially with the 5.8 gig gear 30 meters out all turns to snow and then you crash so you've really got to make sure you do a good test flight take it out quite away so you can still see it but you know getting pretty small and then when you land or talk to your observer and ask them what the video looked like make sure it's all working so you don't end up flying into a big pit of nothing and another thing you really want to do is do a range test do a range test with your video gear running because sometimes your video gear especially on if you've got something like 2.4 for your RC and 900 for your video gear the video gear can significantly reduce your RC range so go into range test mode do a range test um, unfortunately I'm using the R miles C and I couldn't find any mention of a range test mode so we're gonna to have to cross our fingers and hope this time but I'm flying over in an area where if something goes wrong the worst I can do is bend a blade of grass also while it may be tempting to play some Top Gun music while you're flying don't because your ears are a great aid in hearing if there's any other aircraft around quite often you will hear an aircraft audibly long before you can see it and perhaps long before it calls up on the scanner so don't or try and reduce the amount of noise that's going on around you if you can it's just a safety thing right so there we are we're all set up and there's our objective so let's go flying okay right here we go I'm going to come around in front of the camera and now we'll head out to the wild barn across the way I'll put in a bit of down trim and we'll keep our altitude low because uh, we don't want to go over 400 feet obviously you notice this changes in the video intensity that's simply because the I'm using two different receivers one's a commercial one one's my own the commercial one isn't quite as good as the one I made with my own module so it ends up producing a slightly lower contrast picture so here we go I'm not high but the video is still with that helical you get really really good it's really very good so I just skimmed over the treetops there and uh, it's a bit of wind up now it's got a bit of turbulence as you can see we're just coming over the top of another set of trees beautiful so we're not really very high at all getting tossed around a bit by this wind oh yes it's very bumpy over there <laughs> the wind the, probably the air coming off the off the top of those trees bit of a hill here so we don't want to fly into that hill if we can avoid it so there we go look at this Ooh. and as you can see a crystal clear video we could keep going for for miles but here's our turn point over the top of that barn and one thing you can see you can tell whoa we've lost our range whoa here we go there was a lockout on the uh, Milek and I had to really hold the transmitter up to re-establish connection and now I have to find the airfield because I've lost my bearings a little so let's just circle here for a moment see if we can find the airfield I think it's over here so ooh, there's the road must be over somewhere I don't really want to go there's our 
Here's the trees below, so the airfield must be out this way. There it is. Oh, and yeah, we're getting lockouts here. This is this is terrible. This R mile C stuff is rubbish. I just am not impressed. At a range of 1k, <laughs> I lost the signal. That's awful. 2.4, there's no problems covering that distance. This is absolutely horrible. So yeah, I'm not impressed. Not impressed at all with the R mile C. Um, I'm glad I didn't put it in the other model, the Penguin. I think we'll just have to <laughs> make do with this short flight and then put the R mile C gear in the bin. Maybe it's great where there's not a lot of noise, but there is a bit of noise around this part of the world on 433. We've got quite a headwind now, so it's a bit slower coming back. And uh, so you saw when I lost my orientation, I just circled until I could find something that would enable me to see the way home and that's what I've done so here we go we're coming back towards directly towards us now hopefully the camera the video camera is picking this up um, but that was a quite a scary situation I lost lost the radio link had to hold the transmitter up very high to recover it it's a little tip by the way if you actually ever lose the radio link hold your transmitter as high as possible just even a few hundred millimeters can make a difference in terms of the strength of the signal that your radio system or the radio receiver gets from your transmitter. So there we go, that was a scary kind of flight. And that shows you why, you know, you have to take care even on these little flights. Try and land in front of ourselves. There we go, beautiful.